2016, 54.5% of the world's population lived in either a town or a city. And by 2030, that's projected to rise to 60% of people living in one of these urban areas. Hong Kong is a pretty special place, both geologically and geographically. One of the reasons it's such a successful city is because of its geographical features. Victoria Harbour, for instance, is one of the deepest natural maritime ports in the entire world. So it has a lot of space to explore, and if environmental issues like water pollution and air pollution can be kept under control, it's got a great future ahead of it. And the fact that it's dedicating already 40% of its land to Kentry Park is a great start. So even though only 25% of Hong Kong is developed, 100% of the population live in urbanised areas like this. 7.5 million people live and work here and the huge amounts of electricity used in all of the buildings in the area as well as the massive amounts of transportation going through the area such as cars, trains and buses all contribute to one of Hong Kong's biggest problems which is air pollution. Hong Kong has one of the highest road traffic densities in the world as well as local power plants which produce 70% of the area's carbon dioxide emissions. You may have seen photos of Hong Kong's skyline which are characterised by these blankets of smog covering the buildings. Now all of this pollution proves great risk to the people living here because healthcare costs have covered a staggering 2 billion Hong Kong dollars in lost productivity and air pollution related disease every single year. When you put millions of people into a small developed area, you get massive overcrowding and competition for space. Now, space is one of Hong Kong's scarcest resources. More than half of the city's population live in areas of smaller than 500 square feet. That's a whole family crammed into a very small space. So it's no wonder that the prevalence of stress and mental health problems are on the rise. So even though the city centre is so crowded, the residents of Hong Kong are actually pretty lucky. And that's because 75% of the land here is classed as countryside. All it takes is a short 10 minute bus or train journey and a little bit of adventurous spirit. And you can be in one of the area's lush country parks away from the noise and the pollution of the city. Most people think of Hong Kong as a bustling metropolis, but in fact 75% of the area is classed as countryside and most of the national parks only take a short 30 minute ride to get to on the bus or the train, which run very frequently. I'm currently in Sai Kung National Park. There's a road that goes through the park which makes it really accessible to get to. So most people use this area as a really much needed respite to get away from the city's traffic, the air pollution and the noise. It's really lovely and peaceful out here as well. So most people love to come out, do a bit of exercise and get away from the tiny spaces that most people live in in the city centre. But unfortunately, a lot of the younger population still have a fast paced lifestyle as the norm. Hopefully though, in the future, they will get to appreciate the magical wonders of the outdoors that's right on their doorstep. Urban environments represent Earth's newest habitat. The rapid pace of life and change pose daunting obstacles to the wildlife looking to venture into the city in search of food, shelter and mates. Despite its metropolis, Hong Kong is a biodiversity hotspot, but the ever encroaching city threatens the longevity of some of its most iconic species. 
The varied habitat that makes up Lantau Island offers a rich ecology for wild mammals, invertebrate and amphibian populations, as well as offering important migration routes for several hundred species of bird. Black kites are often seen hunting around the shores and peaks of Lantau. Thought to be the most common bird of prey in the world, they are well adapted to life in the city. With an impressive wingspan of 1.5 metres, black kites are equally at home navigating a chase between apartment buildings as they are above Sunset Peak. The Chinese white dolphin is one of the most iconic species in Hong Kong and its presence here has been recorded in the northern and southern waters of Lantau since the 1600s and remains a popular sight to this day. Sadly, sightings are getting rarer. So the waters around Lantau are biodiverse, yet their ecological stability is threatened by continual tourism and development. Hong Kong has a long and complex geological past. The oldest rocks in the northeast of the region date back around 400 million years to the Devonian period. And it was 360 million years ago in the Carboniferous period that all the seawaters would continue to rise and fall. And that created amazing habitats for corals and marine life, especially those with calcium carbonate shells. And those all formed the bed then ready for the marble we still see in Hong Kong today. Through the Permian and Triassic periods, seawater levels dropped and then they rose drastically, covering all of Hong Kong. And that meant that all of Hong Kong was covered in mud and silt sediments that fossils could settle in around 200 million years ago. But it wasn't until the Jurassic period around 150 million years ago that we started getting volcanic activity here in southeast China. A magma chamber formed just below the surface at around two kilometers and eruptions of volcanic ash falling from the sky changed Hong Kong forever. Now we see volcanic activity all over Hong Kong from Lantau Island, Tai Mo Shan, and here in Sai Kung at the Geopark, where volcanic pillars rise from the ground. But 140 million years ago, all our volcanic activity stopped, weathering took over and started to wear those volcanoes away. Hundred million years ago, Hong Kong looked a lot like the Middle East does today, both dry and arid. But in the next 50 million years, it would start to become a lot wetter, and big lakes then would start to form. In the millions of years leading to today, the Earth has been through a lot, including many glacial periods. At the time of the last ice age, the sea levels here in Hong Kong dropped by 120 meters and the coastline was 120 kilometers further south, until today when it returned and created these amazing coastal features. The geopark here in Hong Kong shows the history of the region, and by knowing how the Earth was formed, we can find out what's going to happen to it in the future. Raising public awareness of Hong Kong's unique ecology and conservation is a primary aim of the Geopark. By creating easy public access to this spectacular landscape offers a fantastic opportunity for members of the public to get out of the city and quickly be surrounded by wildlife, fantastic geology and lush vegetation. 
As we've hiked up through the geopark, we've already come across several species of butterfly. And these, along with over a third of China's bird population, nearly 5,500 species of marine life, a nearby thriving population of macaques, and several species of bat, this is just a fraction of the wildlife that can be found in Hong Kong. With all this wildlife, it's no surprise that there is a growing number of campaigns and initiatives such as Wild About Hong Kong, which is seeking to catalogue all the biodiversity around the city and the national parks, as well as importantly, hoping to spark that interest that will hopefully secure a future for the unique wildlife found here for years to come.